Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, in a previous video, I installed a larger fuel pump in my Nissan Stasia behind me. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to wire in a direct feed from the battery all the way back to the fuel pump so that it's supplied with a constant 14 volts uh, at all times. Uh, because aftermarket larger fuel pumps uh, tend to not like the way the Nissan fuel pump control module regulates voltage up and down. So by giving it a constant feed, it'll just keep it running mint for you know as long as possible. So I've got uh, a bunch of parts with me. Let's go check it out. All right, so here's all the stuff needed to, uh, to hook this all up. We've got uh, six meters of uh, eight gauge wire. That's actually seven meters, uh, just in case I mess anything up. Uh, I've got two meters of uh, eight gauge uh, black wire, same sort of thing. Uh, you really only need, um, you know, a meter or so, but again, that's just in case I mess anything up, I've got some spare. Uh, we've got an inline fuse holder here, as well as a 60 amp horn relay. Uh, realistically, a 30 amp would probably do fine, but this wasn't much more, so I just wanted the extra headroom. Uh, then a bunch of lugs to go on the battery, different sizes, because I wasn't sure what size I'd need. Uh, and then, uh, you know, various spade connectors to hook the relay up, and, um, and that's about it. So basic tools like uh, wire strippers, scissors, soldering gun, uh, all that sort of stuff because we're dealing with uh, electrical components, obviously. So all up, everything here uh, came to $99 from JCAR, um, but I priced it up from a few different retailers and they're all basically about that $100 mark as well. So I just went to JCAR because it was closest to me. Uh, so yeah, all up, it's really not that much for what you get and for the peace of mind uh, that you get with your car. So I really think it's worth it in the grand scheme of things. You know, if you consider my car, for example, it's got a, a you know, a rebuilt motor, it's got a manual conversion, all that sort of stuff. If you're spending that kind of money, a hundred bucks in the grand scheme of things is really nothing and probably should be something that you really need to consider doing. So let's go ahead and um, start feeding the wire through from the battery all the way to the boot. That's probably what's gonna take the longest. Probably won't take that long in the video because I'll <laughs> manage to condense it down. Let's give it a go. All right, so in my car, I already have a little hole uh, in the firewall that I've already, you know, tucked a lot of wires and uh, vacuum hose for my ECU and all that sort of stuff to go through. So luckily for me, I can just poke this one through there as well. If you don't have one there, uh, you're gonna need to punch one through. So that should be enough. You really only need enough to be able to go inside and pull it from um, up underneath the dash and that will then pull, you know, the rest of the cable all the way through. And so there we go, you can already see that's uh, dropped down there. So we'll just pull that all the way through. If you feel it binding on anything, you really want to make sure that you stop and just give it a bit of a jiggle because you don't want to strip the, uh, the insulation any more than it has to be. So once you've got the majority through the firewall, uh, you know, it's important to leave uh, enough <laughs> in the engine bay to be able to snake it around the path that you want it to take to reach your, uh, your positive terminal. And so there we go. So I've left myself a little bit more than I'll need, uh, you know, just in case of any mistakes or whatever. So but that's a pretty good route all the way through and I'll tidy that up a little bit more. I'll probably end up getting some, um, some black, uh, you know, sheathing stuff to go over it the whole way. But for now, <laughs> it doesn't look great, but it's, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. And that's kind of always been my motto. <laughs> Let's go and get this uh, all the way through the car, all the way to the boot. So for this part, really be mindful about where your feet are going to go when you're driving. Obviously you don't want this getting in the way. And because it's going to be, you know, a very permanent um, part of this car, you really need to make sure it's done properly. So all the way behind the pedals, all the way up as high as you can go. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, put this up over the steering column in fact, all the way around the corner as high as I can go, then down in, uh, in behind this trim, and then run it all the way under these, um, these uh, kick panels all the way 
to the back of the car. These just pull out. And in fact, if we peel this back, you'll probably see my, um, my sub wiring. Yeah, there you go. All right, now that that's sorted out, uh, I seem to find a place to see my fuse holder. So basically tucking it down there. So there you go, I've just cut this uh, power wire and uh, I'm just gonna solder in this um, fuse holder so it's nice and close to the battery. Pretty straightforward, but these really thick wires uh, are really hard to, uh, to solder. So that's it's gonna be interesting. All right, so here's my Thick 8 gauge wire, I had to go get a new soldering iron because uh, the 30 watt uh, iron I was using wasn't any good but the 100 watt iron that I've got definitely did the job so yeah I mean it's, it's not pretty but it'll work so I'll go ahead and insulate that and route that back through to the battery uh, again now. So there we go. So I'll go and grab my fuse to put in there now as well. So there we go, that's everything in the engine bay side done. I've got my battery lug connected to the fuse holder with a 30 amp fuse in there. And then connected back to the power line all the way back to the rear of the car. So now it's time to head to the boot uh, and we're going to, I'm going to test what voltage the fuel pump gets uh, at idle. That's what I'm going to be using as my measurement to see if this whole rewiring thing was worth it. And don't mind the little red dot on my forehead, uh, that's from the, from the uh, head strap for the, for the camera. <laughs> that's embarrassing. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere in the mid 11s, uh, you know 11.5 maybe even lower voltage which from what I can work out is I think that's bad for an aftermarket fuel pump. I think the stock fuel pump works okay uh, as low as kind of 11 volts. I'm, I'm not positive about that, but that's from everything I've read and I'm, I just wanna make sure I'm doing everything right. So that's the assumption I'm gonna be working on. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and check the voltage at the fuel pump and just see what it reads now. Then we're gonna go ahead and rewire um, that direct feed at the fuel pump end and I'm gonna measure it again once that's done and see what kind of voltage I'm getting then. And hopefully we're gonna see that it jumps up to, you know, basically what the battery voltage is while it's running, which should be close to 14 volts. All right, so now it's time to work out uh, which wire is which. Uh, luckily for me, uh, my mechanic uh, 
previously for whatever reason uh, hooked up an extra earth wire um, directly to the chassis so I know that this purple wire is the earth from the actual pump itself so then logically uh, this wire here the yellow and black one this is the same thickness as the earth wire whereas these other three are thinner so I, I, I believe these will be for the sender so what I'm gonna do is strip a little bit off this wire uh, get my multimeter out um, turn the ignition on and see if I can get any kind of reading uh, between those two wires there and so there it is I've just managed to strip a little bit of the uh, insulation off that yellow and black wire so I can just see a little bit of the copper wire underneath there and uh, you know this this other earth connection you can clearly see some exposed wire there so time to get the multimeter and uh, put the keys in What? 11.2 volts at idle. 11.25. That's really interesting. All right, well, at least I can say I've definitely found my, uh, like, uh, active 12 volt line there. All right, so running idle voltage as measured at the actual pump seems to be about 11.2 volts. So hopefully running these new wires and hooking this all up properly uh, you know, hopefully that's going to um, you know, bump that voltage up a little bit to that kind of at least 12 volts range I think I'd be happy with but you know realistically if we do it all right It should be basically what the battery voltage is while it's running which should be about 14 volts So let's go ahead and start cutting some wires Here's a circuit diagram I put together to show the connections I'm about to make so pause the video here if you need to All right, so the yellow and black wire is the 12 volt feed to the pump and the purple wire is the original ground. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting things off. So what we're going to be doing is using the original 12 volt feed and original ground to activate the switch on the relay, which is then going to engage my new power and send that from the relay to the wire on the pump. So just to test it out, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, poke the wires through to make a contact and just see if this works. Once I know it all works, I'll go ahead and I'll put the proper spade connectors on. But you can see the, uh, like the active 12 volt line goes to one of the smaller lugs and the original earth wire goes to the other small lug on the other side. When this activates, it'll just flip the switch inside the relay, which will allow the power to flow from these two into the, uh, into the fuel pump itself from now on. So I'm going to go ahead and get these thick, uh, you know, power and earth wires sorted out now so that I can attach them to the relay as well. Yeah, she'll do. Alright, so I've got everything hooked up now. I don't know if you can see that, but um, so I've got the... So the battery feed comes in here and goes to pin 30 on the relay. I think it's 30. It's like the bottom one by itself. And then out of the relay, you know, I've used the same thickness power cable. That goes to the power feed of the pump. And then I've just earthed the other side of the pump itself, just directly to the chassis. And so then to trigger the relay, I'm using the original two wires that were originally sending the voltage to the fuel pump to run it. So now that just, you know, when, when I turn the key to on, That'll activate these two wires, which flicks the switch inside the relay, which then allows the power to flow from the relay into the pump. So I've triple checked everything. You know, at the moment, I've just kind of twisted everything. I haven't properly gone around and soldered everything and insulated everything properly because I just want to make sure that this is going to work. I just want to make sure this is right. Yeah, I just want to go start the car and see if it runs. And if everything's good, then I'll go ahead and I'll tidy this all up. But uh, fingers crossed, let's try and start it. All right, here we go. Let's see if this primes any differently. Oh man, that prime even sounds smooth. I reckon we've got it. Let's fire up. Woo! Oh yeah? So what I want to do 
you see what sort of voltage we're getting now. And so there you go, 13.5 volts by wiring it directly to the battery. And I think generally this car runs at about 13.8. So I've still got a bit of a loss somewhere and that could very well just be uh, my choice of earth point there. So I might experiment with a few different places around the chassis and just see if it changes. But even so, that's jumped up from 11.2 to 13.5 volts just by bypassing the standard uh, fuel pump control module and uh, you know hooking it up directly to the battery so that's awesome that's exactly what we wanted we wanted to make sure we had a nice steady high voltage supply at all times and that it wasn't dropping down and, and under volting it and you know maybe causing damage to the pump you know doing this will just negate that ever happening and listen to that That's one of the nicest idols I think I've ever heard <laughs> in this car. There you go. Awesome. So there we go. I've uh, soldered all the uh, connectors on and extra wires and all that sort of stuff. Now it's just a matter of going ahead, kind of wrapping everything up and tucking everything away, maybe into the wall or something like that. But um, yeah, that's, that's the easy part. Uh, one other thing, uh, at the start of this video, I mentioned that, um, you know, all the materials cost $99. Uh, what I found was that I had to go and buy um, a, a more powerful soldering iron to be able to penetrate those uh, eight gauge wires. So this soldering iron costs 50 bucks from Super Cheap. That's a Toledo brand. It's 100 watts. And it, yeah, absolutely, yeah, just ate through those wires. It heated them up so fast. And uh, I don't think I could have done it uh, without that. So just keep that in mind, $99 plus 50 bucks for a, a you know, more powerful soldering iron than your basic entry level one. And, um, and you're laughing. The benefit to me now is that I have a 100 watt soldering iron. So anything in future, I've got that. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? For, you know, people working on your cars and modifying them and, uh, you know, having excuses to go and buy better tools along the way. So at least it, it definitely is for me. And so there you go, guys, that's it. Everything's hooked up, running mint, um, pretty straightforward. It's just got to follow all those steps. It's just connecting one thing to another. So if you found this video helpful, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, drop a like on this video. Uh, leave a comment as well to let me know, um, you know, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. As always, guys, make sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.